Welcome on in, everybody, to the JWB Best Ball Bash, brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, where you can sign up with code JWB for a first-time deposit match up to $100. I'm your host, as always, White, and I'm here with my friend Kyle to draft the Chihuahua Butt Superflex on Underdog Fantasy. So stay tuned. I'm sad I talked about Miko because I feel like this is now in the chat and people are talking about me and Miko. I'm not here for it, okay? <laughs> I actually have a, an unfortunate amount of any picket exposure so far. And it makes no sense to me. Like, why do people hate him right now? Is it because he played injured? I mean, the way I wouldn't be happy is if you tell me you want to draft Jameson Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, what's going on, man? Whew. Super flex best ball, man. This is this is on another level. This is another level. I, I have to bring this up already in the chat. Our boys at the Debbie Royale want you to know that you're on the clock somewhere. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that ADD. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to get better with the slow draft, and someone's on the clock for like two hours, and I'm sending them a Twitter DM like, "Hey, you're on the clock." You know, and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be mean about it. I just. I get so excited to make my pick, it, man. It is tough, right? Like when you're in the slow drafts, the delicate line between just trying to give a friendly reminder to somebody and yeah. that being perceived as being pushy when it doesn't mean to be so. It's, right. it's there's like I feel like there's almost no winning in the slow drafts. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'm never going to be mean about it unless it's like deliberate. I I and and Scott Fish even talks about this too. It's like don't be that person at the turn that makes you know takes two hours, makes one pick, and then sits on the clock for another six hours. Like, <laughs> don't be that guy. But I get it. Like people are busy. Yeah, you know you can't always make your pick within an hour or two. I get it. So it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So. Tonight, the Chihuahua, but super flex. We're getting ready to rock and roll. Uh, I don't know about you, man, but I got in uh, five of these today so far, and I feel like the QB ADP is not correct at all because it's, that's not how yeah. it's going in the drafts. They're, nah. Everybody's going ahead of their ADP. Yeah, so I kind of went and did my own rankings and maybe kind of see how you feel about this, but like... I kind of did my own rankings like for the first five or six rounds just to get a better idea. I mean, I think generally I want to at least leave round, you know, my first two rounds with at least one quarterback. I think you can make the exception though. If you're picking maybe one Oh nine to one twelve. if you want to double up at receiver or go receiver, um, you know, running back, or maybe you get Kelsey if he's there. And that is since I understand passing quarterback, but then by the time it comes back to the three, four turn, you want to at least get one, if not two. Yeah, it's it's uh it's definitely tough, man. Like I have had a couple drafts where, you know, I relied on the ADP maybe just a little bit too much, and uh, like got got stuck in some spots where it's like, oh, I'm like Sam Howell is my QB two, and now I'm like also taking Jacoby Brissett to like make sure that uh that I just have that QB all the way through and doing things like that. Like it's it's definitely something where you can't rely on those ADPs at all. You kind of just have to do your own thing the way right. that you see fit uh, because right. you, you can't rely on them. Yeah. I mean, I think my general rule is like, if I get one of the elite guys, cause I played around with this, like I got the one one I got the one Oh two, I got the one Oh four. So yeah, that was kind of easier. Like if I get one of those elite quarterbacks, I'm not necessarily looking to take another quarterback at the two, three turn. If like, there's so mm. much positional value there because right. The difference between, you know, Aaron Rodgers in round three and maybe Jared Goff in round four, probably not that big. But like the difference between a round or receiver in round three versus round four could be massive. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting dynamic. Uh, and all the drafts I've been in uh, definitely seem different. Some players fall that don't normally, you know, it's just with the with these crazy ADPs and, the, and people not following them and all that stuff. Every, every draft has been diff really different. I think that's what makes Superflex fun is like every draft is unpredictable and you're going to yeah. get some of that unpredictableness like in a one quarterback, but not like you do in a Superflex. And it's... hopefully we don't get a couple people in the lobby who are AFK. I had two people in my last draft. They're <laughs> AFK. And I'm sitting there. And I'm like, I'm, oh, I'm going to get Mark Andrews. I'm going to get Mark Andrews. This guy's already got a tight end. And mm. it just auto defaults to whoever's the highest guy. And I'm like, yeah. come on. <laughs> it's tough too, because like, actually getting stacks in this is proved to be very difficult because mm -hmm. the way that people are just like just taking QBs to make sure they get a QB. They don't like I said, they don't care about the stack. So actually like getting one, you have to be pretty lucky. I feel like, right. Um, you know, I was talking with Steph Miller. She had one she did earlier. That was like pretty unique that she ended up getting Purdy and Sam Howell. 
which ironically enough, those two teams play each other in week 17. So like yep. a little bit of correlation there. So like mm-hmm. one thing I want to say for the viewers is not only do you want to stack, you want to at least get a couple games where there's like week 17 correlation. So yep. typically in that final week, if you advance, like you're going to, you're going to want, you're going to want players in like the highest scoring game of the week and get action on both sides. Cause that's usually yeah. what it takes to win. And whereas in like one QB having the Q- your QBs be in the same week 17 game is actually a detriment because you can only get one of them. So you're kind of, you know, uh, making your bet worse in super flex. It's actually a really good thing because if you're getting two the two QBs in the highest scoring game of the week, you know, it could be just a massive score. Right. For sure. All right. Let's bring up this graph. Whew. Get into it. Here we go. See, what, see where we get. Here we go. All right, we're in. I've, I've been pretty lucky on my. What are you hoping for? So I mean, a top three pick. Okay. That's really a, a, one of my homes. Hurts Allen feels great. Oh, are we at the, the end? Are we at the end? 107. 107. Oh, okay. my boy Omega King is crashing yet again this week. He's at 110. Oh, I actually, I actually, I like the 106, 107 range because I feel like you still get a top quarterback. Yeah, I think it's easier to get the falling, you know, like the the falling values when you're at 106, 107, in my opinion. Yeah, we'll see. I didn't um, realize you had a you had a red avatar. Mine's like orange, so that was what I was looking for. So that's why I was thinking <laughs> you're yeah. at the 112. Omega, he is in here to take all the players we'd like. Um, so we're at seven. The way the ADP falls, you know, there's the top six QBs of Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Justin Fields. And then after that's Justin Herbert and Trevor Lawrence. Like, do you agree with those ADPs? Yeah, I'm pretty close. I mean, I'm Herbert, Lawrence, kind of 1A, 1B. I do like that they're both pretty easy to stack. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm pretty good with that. I feel like if I was at the 109, I probably would go Jefferson. I do feel like maybe 107 is probably a little high for him. Yeah, I I am... I'll take the eight QBs first before uh, Jefferson. Yeah, I mean, as much as I like Jefferson, I I, I was kind of tinkering with it a little bit, like at the turn, like maybe if you know if there's a big run and you're at one twelve, maybe you go to a Tyreek or maybe you could go CD mm-hmm. Dak if they're mm-hmm. both there. I do like those. Okay, we're up. Uh, do you have a preference for her between Herbert and Lawrence? For me, it's Herbert. I it. It's it's splitting hairs for me. I'm mean, let's just go with what you think. Okay. And that obviously a little bit easier game to correlate with they're playing Denver in week seventeen. So it's like maybe mm-hmm. we can get a Jerry Judy, we can get a Marvin Mims late, we can get a Greg Dolcich. Yes. I two of my favorite ways to do it too are the are Mims and uh Dulcich. I yeah. like Judy at cost, uh, but he goes around the wide receivers mm-hmm. for the Chargers that you're trying to draft as well. Uh right. so it's tough to get them both. Yeah, like one QB, I, I've tried to pull off getting like him, Keenan, at like the 3-4 turn, but... Yeah. Uh, Herms, thank you for being here, saying uh, Herms. Josh Kenny Pickett in the first round and assert your dominance for the rest of the league. Uh, not this time. Maybe maybe next time, Herms. What's up, Herms? I appreciate you being here. <laughs> All right. Watson at the 111. Mm-hmm. See, if I was this guy, I would go Tyreek. Tua, or I would go Dak CD. I mean, that might be a little and high for CD. A stack that you can't get yeah, otherwise. I mean, that maybe a little high for CD, but I just feel like he's so good. I and wouldn't it, blame anybody for taking CD Lamb at wide receiver three. It wouldn't wouldn't be me, but right, like it's defensible. I wouldn't take him before Jefferson or Chase, but I think if those guys are off the board, because think about it, it's it's kind of hard to stack Dak if you don't get CD. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't mind Brandon Cook's price. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Gallup, I don't really like taking, mm-hmm. um, just like at all. Yeah, I mean, then you're going like late Jake Ferguson, or maybe you're trying yeah, to get I, I do not want to do that. <laughs> I, you know, I did experiment with uh, some four tight end builds. Obviously, it's a late tight end build. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? I haven't gone four, but I've taken plenty of three tight end builds. Jake Ferguson's actually okay. I think it's something like that where. Uh, it's a three tight end build where you've got like a, a nice stable one, uh, a yeah. high upside tight end, and then you finish it up with a Jake Ferguson because it correlates with your team. I've got no issue there. Okay. You know, four tight ends. I I get the argument behind it. It's just not something that I have. Right. Had oh, I think it that went that way yet. FFPC because it's tight end premium. 
it's a little bit better to do because it's like you don't you you cannot fall behind. But yeah, here yeah. when it's only half PPR, no tight end premium. Man, All right. Two. Yeah, we're up in a couple of picks. I mean, if two is there, is that just the pick so we can lock in two QBs you feel good about? Well, and there's a chance that Waddle will come back to us. Yeah. Oh, he's gone. There yeah, goes well. that. Okay, so back up. Tyreek has now fallen past ADP a good bit. I imagine that's because of the legal stuff that's going on in the news. Mm-hmm. Do you want to take him anyways Because while well, we got the discount? I do because I just feel like the, the next three QBs are are taken, or the next three wide receivers have their quarterbacks taken anyway, so it's not like we, we can wait for a stack. I just feel yeah, like I mean, Tyreek can just win you like two weeks by himself. Yeah, I mean... I'll be taking the discount on Tyreek in drafts if that's what's going to happen while there's this yeah. uh, like legal thing going on because um doesn't mean that anything's actually going to happen. Right. All right, Justin Herbert, Tyreek. I mean, that's a pretty good start out of the seven hole. I think so. <laughs> so this guy went a Burrow Dak. I mean... Would think mm-hmm. he would take CD when he comes back around. Yeah, who's still hanging there? Or uh, I'm, I'm, or, or um, T Higgins. Yeah. See, this is the good spot of being one of three, or even one of two, sometimes with Jalen Hurts there because AJ Brown usually makes it to this spot, so he's like one of the only pairings where you can like reliably get. Right, or you could take Devonta in round three, which might be a little high, but but at least you can get a stack in there. Chubb, Chubb, Jan Taylor, wow. I mean, it's an interesting dynamic. You could never do that. You can never do that on on the one quarterback. Your receivers would be so bad. But that's the thing with this with super flex, they remove a wide receiver position, so it changes the way that you can draft. Omega in the chat saying you can't be too high on Devonta Smith. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I I'm taking Devonta. Smith I don't think it's the game. worst move in the third round if you're trying to get a stack with Hertz. Mm-hmm. I, it's either that or you wait for Goddard or, or you don't get one. Mm-hmm. All right, we're gonna be up here soon. If we're looking at QB, it's Daniel Jones, Geno Smith in the general area. Uh, I personally like both at cost. Do like or don't like? Um, do like. Ah, oh, Jones is gone. Yeah, I would have gone Jones. And then we have to have the discussion on, you know, Amon Ra possibly being here. Waddle is still here. I would go have... Amon Ra because there's a chance we could get Goff coming back. Oh, he's and Amon Ra goes. So now we have the the discussion of Geno Smith versus Waddle, Barkley, Olave. Or if you want to push it until the next round. I think I probably would push it. I mean, I'm definitely Waddle over Alave, but we already do have Tyreek, so it's like, and we can't stack. I mean, Tua's already gone. If we go Alave, uh, if we go Alave, we there's always a chance we can get Carr. I know he's not the best, but he's not a bad quarterback too. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go for the stack with Alave. You know, because I think Carr will make it back to us. And I maybe think it's, even round five. Yeah, I I do think that's an actual difficult decision between them because we already have Tyreek. Um, we can still try and just week 17 correlate the game without QBs. Right. But I don't I love even. drafting any of the wide receivers for Baltimore. We could go with Mark Andrews if he comes back from to us. But again, like awesome. we are also like playing the QB chicken game with ourselves now of like how long do we want right, to wait right, right, on right. another? I get it. It's tough. Goff went directly after us. Gino went two picks later to Omega. Devonta Smith still hanging around. Him and T are still hanging out, huh? Yeah. I don't know if that's really a consideration. See, this is what I mean. There goes Aaron Rodgers. Uh, what Aaron Rodgers has like an ADP in the 40s. Yeah. What um, QBs are left? Yeah, now we're looking at when it gets back to us, maybe Russell Wilson. And we're, I mean, Derek Carr, we might just have to, we'll just like snap off. Well, we would have the correlation if we go Russ since we have Herbert. That's true, too. I'm expecting Russ to go. But. And we can still get stacking pieces to Russ later. 
like we talked about. So, mm-hmm. and that's a great price on Devonta there. We'll see. I mean, the person directly in front of us already has three QBs. That was just their first three picks. Wow. Lawrence Richardson, Goff. Yeah, I saw someone earlier at the 101 that went Mahomes, Dak, and Richardson. <laughs> Herms, I cool. have a guy in mind you could draft. I think I know who that is. There goes Andrews. Um, we snapping off Russ? Or Tim Higgins, <sighs> if you don't want to play... Oh, man, but I just don't think the third receiver helps us as much because it's only a two-wide receiver. I, I agree. I think we snap off Russ. Yeah, stop the bleeding. Yeah, at least we can then be confident in having two QBs. I mean, like I like that. Josh Jacobs, but it's not like I'm not, you know, we could go Brees Hall. I know everybody's so bullish on Brees Hall, and I love Brees Hall's talent, but it's like, man, this guy coming off of ACL. like, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Dynasty Coach A, thanks for coming by. How'd you guys let Omega get DVS in the fourth? Listen, bud, we got to do our own thing. Uh, let's check out the well, board again. I, I think you're you're kind of at a law of diminishing returns if you go if you do receiver with three out of your first four picks. Like I get it in the one yeah in the in the three wide receiver start, but in this one it's I don't tough. Think like it really I, moves the needle enough. I definitely had drafts today where I did do that with the way uh the way the board was falling, but it is a situation where like you go three, you almost like can't really take the fourth. Because because right. of the diminishing returns of doing so, right? The Saints are playing the Bucks in Week 17, so we could get a Godwin, yep. right? Okay, we can come back with a Godwin. Big fan of Godwin. So Same. you will not have to convince me at all. <laughs> I mean, and like, we, you can't always correlate. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reach 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 on a guy to correlate, but like, yeah, you need some of it. Yeah, you you have to if you want any hope of actually winning. And this guy. Um, maybe I even sh- shouldn't even say it out loud, but Derek Carr has not been picked yet. If he comes back, do we snap it off again? Yeah, I mean, I think most of the running backs that I'm really confident in, uh, you know, I I'm a huge Gibbs fan. I do. I'm higher on ETN mm-hmm. than the market. Mm-hmm. But again, the problem with e- with ETN is not ETN. It's Peterson. Peterson's a freaking running back killer. <laughs> Fancy football garage. What's going on? Car gone. Okay, that eliminates our uh, classic. Mike asking, "What is it with the three QBs in the first three rounds?" I mean, with the super flex just locking it in and having that advantage in your draft room. Like, I don't hate it necessarily. No. It depends on how you can follow it up. Well, don't the Colts play the Colts play the Jaguars in Week Seventeen? Uh, the Colts play the Raiders. Oh, Jags right. play the Panthers. That's right. Okay, so I was thinking maybe he did that for correlation, but yeah, yeah. Even Jordan Love is gone, man. Yeah, Carr and Jordan Love go off. See, this is why, because like Russ would have gone too if we didn't snap it off, and we'd be, you know, now Matthew Stafford is the next, but like we would be sad (laughs) if we didn't take Russ there. So we could stack Keenan. We could take ETM. We could take Gibbs. We could take Najee. Herms Uh, is watching. I'm not. I'm not as out on Najee as everyone else, but I. I honestly, I don't mind Najee at all. I think he's appropriately costed. Oh, he's gone. And I take him sometimes. And there, yeah, there he goes. Gibbs, I feel like, is more valuable, valuable in full PPR than he is in half. For sure. Um, ETN, again, he was really good. I mean, we're talking about a guy that he, you know, he came back. What do you think? Judy stacking with Russ. If you feel good about the running backs that we can get later, then yeah. But I feel like there's a pretty big – it's starting to drop off. I feel like ETN's explosive. But, again, if you want Looking Judy, I back, get it. We're like Walker, Mixon, Aaron Jones, Dobbins, where I still feel good about that. All right. Do it. Okay. Then we can get one of the Chargers receivers too. But It'd be nice. E, you know, ETN uh, – We can also go like uh, Gerald Everett later. Okay. You know? ETN came back for his uh, senior season, which he shouldn't have done. I saw your tweet about that. And then he and then he got hurt his rookie year, so it's really two years of the NFL that the guy missed. I feel like we'd think about him differently if he wouldn't have. Yeah, I, I mean, ETN was really good. I think uh, it's adjusting expectations, right? Like, you see him in college. You look at his college numbers and see all the receptions he had. 
But there were plenty of film people out there saying that he's not actually that good of a route runner. His hands aren't, you know, that natural for like a high end pass catching running back. It's kind of proven true that in the NFL, he's probably more of just like a dump off running back, which is fine. But it's adjusting yeah. those expectations, whereas he's not a five targets per game running back. But he was still good last year, right? And like I think yeah. also there's the rookie hype with Tank Bigsby, uh, that people you think like he's gonna steal you know, uh his lunch in some places where I don't know, like it may maybe in some short yard situations he might be better. I'm not gonna say that he is. Uh we haven't seen Tank Bigsby in the NFL yet, you know. Um, I think that Tank Bigsby is a little bit lesser version of ETN in the way that like he can catch the ball out of the backfield if you want to pass to him. He's a good runner, but he's not as explosive as ETN. I think they just want wanted a back who can like literally just take a a, a, a drive away from ETN and them not lose anything. I wonder how many yeah, quarterbacks the are off the flying. board. Ah, oh, the there goes ETN. Flying off. Oh, I I oh, I do yeah. like Ken. I do like Ken Walker this year too. At least at ADP, I feel like he's, uh, you know, around six, man. It's getting tough here because, uh, I mean, I like mixing in Jones at cost, but the... yeah, I'm worried about their upside because of their age. I don't know if they have tournament winning upside. I think they could be a decent running back too. Yeah, I think both of them like. Uh, high end we're looking at is like fringe RB one at this point, but that's not the worst thing in the world for this team at this point. Like Mike, or you want to wait for QJ? I know. I keep looking at Mike Williams. Um, I would probably wait because I do like QJ. You opposed to Hawkinson here. You feel like he's a little overpriced. Hmm. I think it depends if you think he's going to get more or less targets than Addison. If you have him getting more targets than Addison, I feel like it's a good price. If you feel like Addison's going to get more targets. I think they're close, but I, but I think the real decision is, is if we're pushing running back another round. Uh, up to you. You, you make the just, call. Just lock it. Let's just lock it down with Mixon. Oh, no. I didn't get the star in quick oh, enough. Oh, no. That's my bad. <laughs> That's my bad. I should have been starring them. Well, we're taking we're, we're taking them. Sam Howell now. Get, get him ready in the queue. <laughs> Auto draft Terry McLaurin because I we have was, three. Uh, we have an amateur and not starring while we're talking. That's on me. That's my bad. Chatty Kathy over here. All right, you got to go star Sam Howell now. We don't have a choice. <laughs> Just to make sure it's 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 in there. We don't forget about it. All right, uh, I got some chatter in the chat going on so uh let's check this out classic mike i did one of these recently got to sean and ritter very late missed on clayton tune i believe you're talking about near the end yeah uh do, do you do you think clayton tune's gonna play some games or is it gonna be um colt mccoy i, well, don't, know. I don't know if i want either of them either anyway. <laughs> that's gonna be bad dude their offensive line is atrocious i mean yeah they got hollywood brown maybe trey mcbride could be okay but man they really don't have much else i mean it's 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 going to be bad. I don't know that I really want anyone. Uh, Herms saying Mix got them pass catching chops. He's due for more touchdown luck in that offense this year. Big fan of Mix. And... That's what we should have taken. Yeah. We're going to be, we're going to be uh, regretting. We can come back. I'm going to be regretting. Not come back with Dobbins. And... Yeah. I mean, Aaron Jones or Dobbins could make their way back. But then we're least. probably not getting, we're probably not getting how. With 180p, if someone wants to take him this early, I, I, I'm like, yeah, I guess. Uh, Omega mentioning this is one of the heavier QB rooms. He's done. Yeah, I mean, Purdy at 72, Garoppolo at 73. Oh, is Omega in the draft with us? Oh, yeah. he's uh, He was the one time. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because it's not right as here. zoomed in as much for, as for me, so I can't, like, see it. Maybe I need to. Let me see if I can do one more for you. Yeah. You're not going to really, if I do that, you're not going to see the players. Yeah, no, go back. Yeah. All right. Up in a few picks here. Uh, Aaron Jones went. We basically can't take a wide receiver. No, I feel like we're at a lot law of diminishing returns. I got to hope we get Dobbins. Put these boys in the chat. I don't want to take Miles Sanders, so I'm hoping it's Dobbins. 
Both these people in front of us have two running backs. So there goes Sanders. Oh, wow. <laughs> On, Never crossed my fingers for J.K. Dobbins before, but here we are. All right. Oh, Rip Got him. Dobbins. Oh, hey, we, have, we don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. uh, are we pushing on Sam Howell on the way back? or just... I would. Okay. I'll be surprised grab, if he's there. Grab another one of these running backs. Yeah. Or... I like Akers, personally. Oh, okay. And there goes Akers. <laughs> um. Maybe think about going one of the one of the three tight ends that are left, just to just because I feel like we're we're probably going to have a weaker running back room than the rest of our our league. So at least if we can lock down an elite tight end, like my yeah. thought is, I only want to be weak at one of the four positions where where I'm basically yeah. going zero. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and I don't mind going a hero RB type of deal here with Dobbins and just trying to backfill our RB two, you know, with just a bunch of shots. Right. Where's Muthat? I like Muthat. Yeah, where's Muthat? Uh, I mean, I'm all in on... I, I love taking Muth. I like him at cost, for sure. Um, are you, Do you like Pitts? Got I her? do like Pitts. Is Ritter still there, or is he gone? Take a look. He's gone. Jeez. Man, what a heavy quarterback <laughs> room. Whew. Also, I think that like means... Nope, there goes Hal. I was about to say. Yeah, I had a that, feeling. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, we're I mean, playing, yeah, I'm, I don't mind. We're them with Herbert and Russell Wilson just being healthy. Third quarterback to us is just kind of a fail-safe at this point. Right. Yeah, I just, agree. I mean, I like Deontay Johnson a lot, too. I do like Deontay Johnson. But again, I know, we probably just really legitimately can't build. take a wide receiver. No. I do like Pitts because, uh, like I said, and then I feel like we're only weak at one spot. Yeah, I dig it. Uh, he's also uh, a player that's kind of easy to correlate with because a lot of the Chicago skill position players go later. Right. Yeah, so it's like now we're pretty filled up and we just got to stack, you know, not stack, but just like fill up running back. Yeah, take some shots. You we'll know see what, what comes mean? back to us. Pretty big dip on receiver here once we get to Quentin Johnston. So if he's there, yeah. I'm not opposed to taking him. I feel like there's a pretty big drop off at receiver once we get him. Then it kind of gets into the gray area. Like I'm good with Sky Moore and maybe Zay Flowers or Elijah Moore, but like after that, yeah, the 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 uh, cliff is very real at wide receiver. And I feel like that's such a good range to get running backs. Now one QB, it's kind yes. of a good range to get like falling running back or tight end, obviously different now because we're not going to have a falling quarterback. Right. But hopefully we, we, we do grab some of those RB values in that section and uh, fill out that RB two spot for us a little bit better. Yes. I have a hard time taking Tony that high over sky more. Just my I was taking some early on, like when I drafted Pat Mahomes, but, but only then. And then, I started to just decide I would much rather just take the shot at Sky Moore or She Rice rounds later than Tony. Even MVS, you know. Right. Yeah. I don't mind him either. What Cause... Sky Moore is like Sky Moore and Rishi Rice are in the 120s. MVS is in the 150s. This is yeah. one QB. Um, obviously those are rounds later now with the Superflex, but that's what four rounds after Kadarius Tony. Right, that's what I'm saying. And we yeah, don't I'll even know which one shot. of them is going to be the, the wide receiver. Yeah, we, we really don't. So <sighs> I'll take Mon- I would have liked Montgomery back to us, or James Conner. I like both. Ooh, Trey Lance. There's some. There's a believer. Oh, Got man. a believer. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the available. Swift is fine by me. Yeah, Swift Pacheco. I'm oh, good. Oh, okay. As I go to star, he gets taken. Uh, Pacheco is fine. I like Rashad White a little bit. I don't know how you feel about him. Probably better in full PPR, but like, I For just sure. feel like yes, his metrics weren't good last year, and he's, but like the Bucks O line was a disaster. And yeah, I don't know. He's that's also really a bring back for Alave. I'll mention. Yeah. Oh, Quinton's gone. That's all right. We can get Gerald Everett. Yeah, that's that'll be a target. I think we got to go running back regardless. Yeah, you you make the call between Pacheco and White. 
I'm going to go Pacheco. Okay. Just because I feel like it's really, really open for him. I feel like if he can lock that job down, you know, he's probably not as much of a receiver. Or like White is more yeah. of a pure receiver, but like it doesn't really benefit us because this is only half PPR. And I just don't know how many touchdowns he's going to get. I think Pacheco could have like 12 touchdowns. If a, things a, go right. Yeah. I mean, I don't see why he couldn't. It's possible. That offense. Um, all it takes is a little bit of uh, touchdown variance to the running backs, like on the goal line, more than, you know, them having the passing touchdowns. And he runs. Could just be, yeah, it could just be that the, you know, I mean, they're, they're basically the best offense in the NFL. Like it wouldn't be a surprise, you know, for him to just get that many touchdowns because they're down there so often. I think we it's saved face. I think we saved face with this. I, I'm even though we missed it's coming together on, on mixing. I feel like it's yeah, it's coming together. Would be nice uh, to get another running back. We feel good about after this. I like. I've actually been taking a good amount of Javante Williams lately. Once we get to this spot, so I like it better in this format because we can roster twenty. Whereas with mm-hmm. the one QB, we're capped at 18. It's so like we can't really afford to have a guy out for six to eight weeks or whatever. With this one, you know, we're probably going to go six running backs at least anyway. Maybe we set, maybe we go seven if the value's there. I don't hate it. Yeah, we'll see. Could be. Um, there's, you know, been some good news about his injury. It's still a really bad injury. I, mean, I totally expect him to, to be out for some amount of time. Um, Mayfield. I t- took some Baker Mayfield today. Did not feel good, but had to do it. <laughs> oh, we don't have a third QB, do we? We don't. We ha- well, we we we're bleeding at running backs. We don't really have a chance. Yeah, I mean, so like for us, I would just be looking like literally one of these backup QBs that we it would. It's just because the way we're drafting, we're drafting that that we're assuming Herbert and Russell Wilson are healthy all year, and all right. anyone we would have taken won't wouldn't play over them. All right, so we do have a dolphin, so we could go with a raven. Well, I don't know. There's still Fifth some wide receiver. Or... No, man. There's, I'd li- I like James Cook. Oh, you, no? you have the wrong host for James Cook. But if you tell me you really Charbonnet? want Charbonnet, I like Charb. Let's do that. Okay. Came to a peace He's kind of got a little bit uh, more of a profile for his, an anchor zero yeah. running back build anyway. Omega says he was going to take Tannehill. <laughs> uh, ben in the chat mentioning he got Richardson at 20 to pair with Barrow and got Pittman at 92 earlier. Wow. Fancy Football Ninja, thanks for joining. Mentioned he just did a Chihuahua live stream on his channel. Thank you for the good luck. Hope your draft went well. Dicey Coach A mentioning if you're betting on Russ, you should bet on Javante too. It's a decent point. Uh, we do also already have Judy, so we're already starting to make the bet on the offense. And we can also sure. do so later with uh, Dulcich or Mims as well. Um. I'll mention that if Zay Flowers does manage to make his way back to us, I'd probably take him <laughs> just for the correlation. Yeah. Now that at least we have three running backs, I feel pretty good about, you know? Mm-hmm. For sure. I feel like we definitely got three before it really starts to get, you know, I've got a fair amount of Kendra Miller. I think I posted this yesterday, but I mean, there's definitely some risk there. Mm-hmm. He was just a guy that I've been taking because I feel like he's going to be two, two to three rounds more expensive by the time we get to the end of August, because Kamara is going to be suspended. So his ADP is just going to go. Yeah. Uh, Fancy Bowl Ninja mentioning Richardson, good for best ball value, and that the QB depth depth goes so quick. It's so very true. Uh, Toronto Dave, thanks for being here. Love you. Omega mentioning that we do got to smash Flowers if he's there. Uh, ben mentioning he likes the James Cook bet a lot more on DK, where he goes in the same range, but it's full of PPR. A good point. Fair. 
Uh, we'll be up here in a minute. Uh, Fancy Football Ninja is asking, what's our favorite wide receiver value around the 10th round of best hole for the Superflex draft? Sky. Well, in, in the Superflex, that's later now. It's not really, oh, it's not 10th round anymore. Right so now, now, yeah, now it's, you know, we're looking at the, the, the Bateman, Zay, who just went, of course, uh, Elijah Moore, Michael Thomas. Those. I'd say Elijah Moore, Zay Flowers for me. Uh, if I had to pick, it go like, oh, we're up. Bateman, Moore, Zay. We're up. Yeah, we're up. Um, okay, take a quick look. Cortland Sutton, I hate, but correlation. What about P. Uh, Ryan? So I was going to say, same for P. Ryan. I mean, I'm not as crazy, but like, what if he gets a ton of receptions this year? Let's do P. Ryan. There could be like a little mini stack there. Uh, yeah. I I I like can barely force myself to take Cortland Sutton, so I just can't do no, that. No, no. I was like really, really high on him, and then what? He had that like foot or that ACL injury a couple of years ago, and he's never been the same yeah. since he came back. Yeah, man, I've I've fallen for it a couple of years now. I just, I just I don't know. I don't think there's much there. Maybe he bounces back, but yeah. Um, Dynasty Coach A in the chat saying Mims over Sutton, especially at cost. In Dynasty, probably that too. Yeah, yeah. Mims I'm over in, Sutton. I'm in Dynasty. full agreement. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Appreciate you. You know, that's what my wife says. She's like, how can you remember what this guy's rushed for in 2019, <laughs> but you can't remember what I said 10 minutes ago? And I'm like, well, that's why I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not how my brain works. Yeah, it's it's too stuffed with uh, random football facts. So I was like, that's what drove me to be a content creator. I'm just like, you know what? I'm full <laughs> of all this useless knowledge. I might as well at least like make some money from it. <laughs> Or try to. <laughs> uh, coming up to us soon here. If it's enough to pay for best ball, I guess it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, is there anything that's sticking out for you in particular? I kind of like like taking on a bet like uh, on like Rashad Penny, considering we like yeah on the running back. I would He's... say Penny or Harris. I mean, they're pretty much 1A, 1B for me at this range. I like Penny purely because, like, best case scenario for both of them, Penny, uh, you know, it's much better than Damian Harris. Behind that offensive say. line? Yeah. I mean, if it, like, I get He's it. He's going to look like Bo Jackson running behind that, <laughs> that line. Ex extremely cheap contract. Like, it wouldn't be a surprise <laughs> if he actually just doesn't make the roster. Like, completely possible because of how cheap he was signed to. But he is one of the best pure rushers in the NFL. It's only a matter of I know. I've been. Yeah, we got him. Okay. Bang. Smash. Easy. But yeah, I've been Feels high on now. Penny for like five years. My home like keeper league. I had him and kept him for like two years at like really, really low cost. And he just kept getting hurt. And then during I gave the, up on him. And then of course that's when he went ham. <laughs> during during the big board, uh, he was my most drafted player. And I never drafted him after he signed with the Eagles because the price jumped to like six rounds. <laughs> but I just kept drafting him when he was so cheap because I'm like, he's going to sign somewhere. Like, he's really talented. Someone's going to sign him to his cheap contract because they know they can. And right. he's going to jump up. We got pits, baby. Dynasty Coach A, when are you getting your starting title? <laughs> yeah. Did you not see it? I know. He's, I, I, or he's trolling. Dynasty Coach A definitely is uh, lower on pits than the most i know but I like think about where he was go he was going last year i mean we're i i do like dulcich i he he yeah. is a player that impressed at least in limited time yeah fancy football that. ninja saying this season sean payton gonna push his young talent like mims dulcich to see what he has for the future honestly it would not surprise me at all i mean like i like dulcich in general i think uh he's a, he's a good bet at cost mims you know he does have players in front of him unlike dulcich but would it surprise anybody if he quickly ascended the depth chart? Not maybe not over, you know, Judy, because I think Judy's wide receiver one there, but over Sutton, Patrick, uh, the first pick of the Sean Payton era for the Broncos. He's a really talented player yeah. in the second round. Like, yeah, 
You got to bump don't you got to bump Dulcich up in the ranks just cuz of that hair, man. <laughs> yeah, the flying but locks. You think about it too. Denver had limited limited draft capital because they gave up mm-hmm. the farm for Russell Wilson. They traded yeah. back up into round 2 to get Marvin Mims. So what does that tell you? That that tells yeah. me a lot. Yeah. So I I would definitely agree that Mims could be a low key steal. Ooh. Uh, I think they're going to do similar things. Him and Corlton Sutton, uh, both kind of downfield bets or d- downfield players. Um, that's that's like another reason why, like, I just can't draft Sutton. I really like how our running back room came together, man. That was nice. Yeah, those these four in a row right there Ooh. ended up working out really well. All right, let's take a look. And I, you know, and for the listeners, I, I, that's why I kind of like that. Sometimes I like going, getting some of those stud wide receivers early because I feel like the running backs fall and then you don't need to take a receiver and then those running backs keep falling. Mm-hmm. I'm starring uh, Dulcich and I did star Mooney because Mooney correlates with, uh, with yeah. Kyle Pitts. I'm I mean, pretty, we're, are we smashing I'm, Dulcich if he's there? I, yeah, I am. Okay. What's Pitts' buy? Pitts' buy is like 13. This right? is 11, yes. Yeah, 11, so okay. Um, backup plan. Is there anything else that you'd want? I mean, we're going to need a third quarterback, but I feel like we did yeah. well. I just feel like, yeah, you know, we were, we were trying to stop the bleeding at running back. We just didn't have the luxury. Right. Uh, so getting Dulcich there feels good. Boom. Uh, we'll probably take a third tight end, but we'll do that real late now that we have Pitts Dulcich. Yeah. I, I just like it because. If I'm getting one of those tight ends in round 20, there's a much l- lesser chance that I'm drawing dead. And what I mean by that is more than likely that guy's going to make the team and he's going to play. There's so many wide receivers and running backs that people are going to take in round 17, 18, 19. These guys are not even going to make the team. Mm-hmm. With tight end, you kind of mit- at least with a round 20 tight end, you kind of mitigate some of that risk. This isn't yeah. my idea, but that's kind of something Sean Siegel talked about recently. Yeah. But Yeah, it's part- and it's part of the reason why, like, four tight end builds and those one QBs isn't completely crazy. Cause like when you're taking someone at the very end of your draft, you're just hoping they get one, maybe two weeks in your lineup. How's that going to happen? They probably score a touchdown. Who's more likely to score a touchdown, the starting tight end on a team or the fifth string wide receiver, you know, right. for sure. Uh, face of old ninja saying Mims value will go up in ADP if he does well in preseason. I think it there's a good chance it's just going to climb throughout the offseason. I think there yeah. could be plenty of news that makes that happen. Then I see Coach A mentioning wonders if we should have gotten Kendry Miller instead of Dulcich. I mean, it was on my radar for sure. Um, but after going those four tight ends and or four running backs in the row, starting to feel good there, and then us having the correlating piece with Greg Dulcich, right. I think it was hard to turn down Dulcich there. Agreed. I mean, I see what Coach. Coach A is saying for sure. I definitely agree with that. Um, I do feel like we do have Char- Charbonnet, though, is like the kind of running back you want in a maybe hero build because we're not going to wish. Okay, we're up. Yeah, let's take a look. Um, Everett, stick out to you. Everett? I know, I know oh, we don't want to oh, go yeah, tight Everett end that them. late, but like we don't have a charger. That's true. The buys all line up still. I we're don't kinda, love anybody here anyways. So right. we're kind of set at tight end. I feel like we can unstar it. Probably, we don't even need to draft another one, in yep. my opinion. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, we definitely could have gone Kendra for sure. I, but Okay, so what? Yeah, six rounds left. We're definitely going to need to take a couple more wide receivers. Yeah, if you go to the receivers, let's see who's left. I'm I'm pretty bullish on Isaiah Hodgins. I think he's got a good shot. Oh, I take a lot of Isaiah Hodgins. At knocking no down that here. wide receiver one, he was really good at the end of the year. He was with Brian Dable in Buffalo, so they've kind of got that chemistry. He was a really good college player at Oregon State, got hurt. Um, you got a lot of receivers in New York, but I feel like he's kind of the guy that's going to move the chains for them. He is the only wide receiver in the room of his archetype. Mm-hmm. The only one. 
big body possession receiver like that. He will be starting on the outside for them. And I probably would go Wandale because he's he just has a great profile for best ball because he's super fast and he can break off a, a long TD reception at any time. But he's coming off an ACL, and I just get I we already got you know we've already got a running back room made of glass. <laughs> You know, I <laughs> look at the guys we have. <laughs> it's true. Uh, but that's the goal we have to do. I mean, when we wait on running back like that, right, we have to take some bets that are high upside bets to try and catch up in this in that spot, right? Um yeah. but for for Wandell, I don't I th- I think there's a pretty good chance Paris Campbell starts over him in the slot. What do you think about that? That one is tough because Paris Campbell is a player that I've always liked. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy. He did look yeah. good last year, but was also in, you know, the Colts offense was a d- d- dumpster fire. So <laughs> if he actually has a decent quarterback throwing to him, I, I he, he might have a shot if he's healthy. Yeah. yeah. My, my thought is, you know, Paris Campbell signed with them pretty early on in the, in the free agency. Not, a, not a great contract, but none of the wide receivers on the team have a good contract. Right. Um, and with just Wandell coming off the ACL, uh, if Campbell's, you know, getting all the snaps to start camp, there's a lot. I'm not really buying all the hype that's coming out right now of him, like taking running back carries and all that type of stuff. But uh, all right. I, I, yeah, I, I'm what, Campbell over Wandell currently. What receivers are there? They're yeah, starting as a, to go. As a run here has happened. You opposed to taking Mims or do we have too many? Oh, is he gone? Did he go? Uh, did he just? Uh, he did not go. No. Okay, Maybe you gotta so. scroll the mouse thing up. Oh yeah, he's there. He is. He's right there. Okay. Okay. Um, is that too many Broncos yeah. or no? It's it's probably too many for me. We have three. What about MVS? Yeah. What about MVS? I don't mind MVS. I don't mind Tyquan Thornton either. I feel like you I can like take MVS because I'm going with. I'd rather have him be tied to Mahomes. Like. I've been taking a decent amount of, I shouldn't say decent, I've taken a lot of Tyquan Thornton, just because uh, I think he's going to start for them. He's got the four two eight speed, uh, kind of perfect profile for best ball. Um, catch, hopefully catch Sean some, Siegel's some been taking passes. a lot. He's been drafting a lot of Thornton. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. Uh, I love hearing that because <laughs> I've been taking Thornton like all off season. Curtis Samuel's a guy I don't hate. He's he's actually been like a wide receiver too most of the time that he's played majority of the time. Yeah, I mean I like. Oh like, no, never mind. We already have McLaurin, so yeah, that's out. I'll, I'll quickly mention though. I you know I've liked Curtis Samuel in general over a long period of time now. I just worry what's going to happen now this year in the offense if there are actually going to be enough right. passing attempts for all three him. McLaurin, Dotson, and I really like McLaurin and Dotson, so I worry like Hodgins. this. Hodgins. Yeah, that's yeah. We'll start that one for sure. And I another guy late I like too is Khalil Shakir. Like, Don't what if this what if this me. dig situation boils over, and all of a sudden it's Gabe Davis and Shakir? Like, or maybe uh you know them having this big slot in Dalton Kincaid doesn't work out because uh he's a tight end trying to play a big slot for them when they already have a slot wide receiver. Right. Yeah, that that is that's going to be a harder fit than I think people think. Like, if you want to take Kincaid in Dynasty, I'm all in. But like, he's being drafted at like tight end what twelve? I mean, on yeah, in a redraft. It is, and ridiculous. I think Mayer will have a better season than him this year. My opinion. I wouldn't be surprised if Mayer, Laporta, Musgrave, yeah. all have a chance to be, you know, better than Kincaid this year. I did just get Musgrave in a dynasty like f- five or six rounds less than when, when where all those guys went. I was floored. <laughs> all right. We're back up. Hodgins available. Stamping yeah. it off. Stamp it. All right. Love it. Boom. Oh, Buffalo drafted Shakir and Hodgins in the same draft. Yeah. I just forgot about Trying that. Trying to Dave with the facts. All right. Forgot we're good at tight end, right? Yeah, we are. We are done there. Four picks left. Let's take a quick little view around what's available to us. We have to take a third QB just to, yeah, it was a just in case in there. Who's there? 
it's backups. But like, I'd be fine taking Mike White. Um, he's probably one of my favorite backups if you're going to be drafting one out of the entire NFL mm-hmm. just because of Tua's concussion right. Right. stuff. Um, there's Kyle a chance Trask of, is fine. Yeah, there's a chance he wins the job. Yeah, Kyle, yeah, Kyle Trask is just like he might win the job. Even if he doesn't, um, Baker could just stink and they just see what they have in Kyle Trask, even though he might stink too. Like, at least it's a body if there's an injury to one of our our QBs. Right. Omega's saying you can't believe we passed on Mim two times. Because we have and, so many Broncos. Yeah. I mean, Mims is still there. <laughs> at this point. I mean, I'll take him if he comes. I have to. I like Shakir, though, too. Probably my two favorite, like, late receivers I've been taking have been Hodgins and Shakir. What is going on here? This person has two quarterbacks, two running backs, 12 wide receivers, no tight ends. Well, what? Are they on auto? Yeah, but usually you have a position limit set. No, they finally took a tight end. 12 receivers? I've never seen that. Wild stuff today. All right. And oh, Mims finally cool. goes. Do you think you like Shakir? Unless you want to take Mike White. Shakir. Okay, we'll do Shakir. Uh, that puts us at seven wide receivers. I'm not sure if we need to take any more there. Three, so that especially with starting with so Tyreek, we'll go three, Lowry, Judy, three QBs, or... seven running backs. I don't hate that. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. Okay. Pierre Strong, Uncle Lenny still hanging around. Mm-hmm. Like both of those. Leonard Fournette's like definitely gonna sign somewhere like after training camp, right? Probably. I think some of these vet guys, they just don't want to go through the rigors of like two a days and all this other stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah. they're just like, ah, for whatever. I'm just going to work out at home and I'm going to sign in like July right before training camp. So I don't have to deal with all this BS. Yeah. I, I think they're definitely all waiting at this point or waiting just for like the first big injury in a backfield. And then they'll be like fighting to get in line right. to sign. I do think this is an interesting build because since we only went with two quarterbacks early, it allowed us to shore up running back, allowed us to get an elite tight end. Yeah. I feel really good about our receiver room. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, Wilson or Herbert misses time. I mean, we're, we're done. We're dead. But that was probably true no matter what. Even if we, you know, t- like did actually take uh, a third QB earlier, mm-hmm. it probably still true. Especially with the way the QBs were going in this draft. I mean, like, I'm scrolling up here. Desmond Ritter went in the sixth round. Like, that's the draft we were in. <laughs> so, that's where then that's where we would have taken a third QB. I mean, you look at this right here. Uh, I think Brock that's Purdy and got. Jimmy Garoppolo, 6-7 turn. Howell's the last starter. You know, well, not the last starter because we got Ryan Tannehill and Baker Mayfield a little bit later. But, like, yeah. All right, we're that's about very to be true. Up. Because I feel like if you if you go three quarterbacks in the first like six or seven rounds, I just feel like your position group is so far behind. You know, mm-hmm. we're back up. We could go with Leonard Fournette. Kyle Trask is here if we want to do like third QB. There's also Sam Darnold, Colt McCoy. Anything stick out for you? Uh, I'd say Trask because there's just a chance he wins a job. And wait, what's uh Herbert's bye week? It's not the same, right? Five, oh, it's uh, five. It is the same as Herbert. Hmm. Yeah. Let's go for net. Okay, got it up in time. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only thing. Then if we, you know, then we're we're missing we're missing points from our our QB two, and we got to hope that Russ doesn't crap the bed in week five, but. Uh, Dynasty Coach A saying Howell was a steal compared to the rest of the prices. I'm inclined to agree. Uh, him going at the end of the eighth when Desmond Ritter went middle of the sixth, uh, even Mac Jones in the middle of the sixth, which I like Mac Jones, but like I think Mac Jones Agreed. and Sam Howell aren't aren't that far, far from each other just because like Howell's probably going to run. 
he ran a ton his you know his junior year at North Carolina when all those guys went to the NFL. Deami Brown, Javante, Michael Carter. Yeah, um, and and we were looking at Howell. I think when we were up there, we 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 took Pitts. You know, instead. I mean, I was doing 2020 mock drafts for 2022, and it, you know, people had Sam Howell going in round one, and he did a disappointing junior year, but he he rushed for 828 yards and 11 touchdowns as a junior. Yeah, mm-hmm. because their offense was so bad, like their skill players were so bad, he just he had to. It was the only way they could yeah. move the ball. Dancy Coach Jay mentioning Minshew might could be a good prayer pick. Do you, do you think that Anthony Richardson starts week one? I do. Um, in which case, like, I think Mitch, Minshew's only in if it, if he gets hurt. But, like, that's also okay, too, because we know that Minshew is a fancy producer if he plays. Um, yeah, I kind of like it for Minshew because he's in a dome. Because, like, he's a quarterback that doesn't have a great arm. He has everything else that you love, obviously, besides size. Yeah, Minshew has everything you love. He doesn't have a great arm. So he could benefit from playing in a dome. Like their skill players aren't bad. Right. But I just feel like Richardson's a fourth pick. Like your quarterback or your, uh, your head coach just coached Jalen Hurts the last two years. Like I feel like mm-hmm. the writing's on the wall. Coming back up here. Um, do you want to do a third QB? Do you want to look at I those? I think we have to. Yeah. Uh, so Darnold McCoy. I like the Minshew through. pick. Yeah, because his buy is not till week eleven. So like, what if he does? What if he does give us like five or six weeks before Richardson takes over? Okay. Shout out Dynasty Coach A. You know what I mean? Bringing up because I feel like if we took Darnold or if we took that other guy, uh, they have the same bye week as our quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. You know. We got one pick left on this team. So we'll probably go it's go probably running, be running another back. running back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's pull up the running backs. <laughs> also, I mean, <laughs> could go. has been on the Richardson isn't good train for a while here, so I'm no surprise he brought it. Well, he's going to be. I mean, he's going to be a project. I feel like we've. I feel like I'm fine with Richardson in Dynasty long term. Like most of the teams where I have Richardson in Dynasty, though, he's my third quarterback, or I'm not really counting on him to play this year. Mm-hmm. I just feel like if you're taking him at like QB 11. QB 12 and redraft. I just feel like that is really setting it. You know, he could miss. I mean, you could miss by a lot. <laughs> Omega. Wow. I had Minshew and Darn- Darnold cued both go right before him <laughs> with us um, being part of that. Abanakanda, maybe Z- Zach Evans, Deuce Vaughn. I feel like those guys, that's, you know, a pure dice roll. I've taken a lot of Zach Evans. I've taken zero Deuce Vaughn. We gotta get um, you some shares, man. <laughs> gotta see the video I did on this guy. It's, I mean, this is insane what this guy did. Hold I mean, on. he's he is he was you gotta post it for the college. viewers. I did, I did. Incredible in college. He's five, what five five one, under one hundred eighty pounds. Wait, right. Just wait till you see these highlights. <laughs> I know they're really good, but luckily, I'm posting it. We'll get posting it so you can send it to the list to the viewers. <laughs> uh, it looks like we'll, we'll we'll probably get uh Izzy or Zach Evans here, so I'm not really too worried about it. Um, I'll mention Zach Evans actually has correlation because of Isaiah Hodgins. Ah, uh, okay, I like that. I mean, he was actually the number two running back in the 2020 class, only behind Bijan Robinson. You know, he just kind of fell out of favor at you know, TCU and then got hurt at Ole Miss and then they kind of let this other kid have the job, but yeah, he's got um, a ton of, ton of talent. Quick. Got a couple questions. We're going to get to real quick. Oscar the Grouch in the chat. Thanks for being here. What are your thoughts on Ridley? Kyle, what do you think? Thoughts? Um, They said he's looked really good in camp. You know, uh, he's got a lot of competition for targets. So I like it in best ball because you know, you can obviously stack him with Trevor Lawrence. I don't, I'm not crazy about that. The, those round three receivers in underdog right now. And I feel like mm-hmm. it's kind of Debo Samuel. Like he's literally has the same target share and stuff as, as I and he's three at three rounds more expensive. You know, Kristen Kirk's going to get a ton, you know, Zay Jones performed last year. They got Evan Ingram. 
So I like Ridley, but I do feel like his ADP could be a little high. Yeah, I I like Ridley. I want to be invested in that offense. I prefer Christian Kirk at cost. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another question from Oscar the Grouch. And for the rookie one, what do you think of Kendra Miller? Uh, I think we both are in on Kendra at cost, right? So I'm at 37% exposure on, our, on underdog. <laughs> so it's my number That's one awesome. most rostered guy. Yeah. I, I just sent you that. You gotta you gotta send that to the viewers, that Twitter that I just did. <laughs> you watch that on on Deuce Vaughn, you're gonna want you're gonna want to run through a wall. <laughs> uh uh we'll we'll uh we'll throw it in the description of this video. Anybody right. wants to check out some Deuce Vaughn highlights. <laughs> um Let's uh let's go over this team now that it's all done. So starting off at QB, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, Gardner Minshew. We ended up waiting forever for that third QB, but I think we kind of had to. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, running back, we got J.K. Dobbins, Isaiah Pacheco, Zach Charbonnet, Samaj P. Ryan, Rashad Penny, Leonard Fournette, Zach Evans. I think a very good recovery from waiting on running back, especially after our unfortunate auto picket. At, at my uh, uh, failure to star. Right. And I think too, you know, because you only start two receivers on average, the, you know, the, the running back is more likely going to outscore the receiver for that flex spot. So we'll see. Oscar saying he wants to see what uh, happens if Zappy beats up Mac Jones. I don't think it's happening. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's actually a battle. I think like the all the battle, the QB battle stuff is just made up. It's not real. Um, at wide receiver, we got Tyree Kill, Chris Olave, Jerry Judy, Terry McLaurin, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Isaiah Hodgins, Khalil Shakir. One of the strengths of the team, I would say. Very. Tight end: Kyle Pitts, Greg Dulcich, Greg, uh, Gerald Everett. That's a really good room. Very. We've got. We've got the Denver and Chargers correlation throughout the team. We snagged a little bit of uh, correlation outside of that for Week 17 as well. Not as much as you'd like, but it's tough in these drafts. Right. Yeah, it was fun. I feel like you did not zapping. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it was a pretty pretty good recovery. I mean... And these drafts are so unpredictable every time. It's like you just have no idea how it's going to go. Yeah, these, these drafts are really tough to navigate because of the way the QBs, QB ADPs happen or don't happen, I should say, because people are just – we saw it in this one. Like this one was so QB heavy. Uh, right. QB 30s being drafted in round six. Like <laughs> what do you – when that happens, you kind of just have to, you know, stay water, adjust yeah. your, your, your draft to what's happening. Yeah, I mean, for everyone at home, I mean, I think that's the key is you got to you have to be flexible with, you know, super flex, especially when you're kind of at the end of round one and there's that huge avalanche of quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. You got to be willing to stand in there, take the positional value because you don't ever want to be the guy at the end of the run. Right. Well, that wraps things up for this draft. Kyle, tell everybody where they can find you, find all your work, all that stuff. Yeah, so luck is made FF on Twitter. I do have my own uh, YouTube channel, which I'll send to you if you don't mind posting it. Um, yeah, my link tree is on my Twitter. Basically, has all my you know published work. I am with Rotoballer.com. So if you're coming out for the Fantasy Football Expo in two months, love to see you. But yeah, Kyle Lindeman, happy to uh, hang out with you here for an hour. Yes, it was a lot of fun, <laughs> a fun draft uh, that we had to navigate here. Um. Toronto saying great stuff. Oscar Grouch saying thanks. Thank yeah. you for, for coming by. We really appreciate everybody that was here. Um, let me, if I can actually uh, do this. Cra- okay. And uh, <laughs> so for, for us at JWB, you can find me YP underscore FF on Twitter. JWB is at JWB underscore FF in the description of this video. You can find all the cool stuff and ways to support us. There's uh, the discord that is free. That is insanely active. There's over 400 people in there. Uh, we're starting to run redraft mock drafts to get ready for that. We're still running some dynasty stuff in there too. Always dynasty conversation conversation going on, and of course, best ball stuff Always. as well. Patreon is in there if you'd like to get some cool extra features from us. And then while you're here, 
you got to make sure you like and subscribe. It's the best way to uh, support us if you're enjoying the content. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time.